Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where I've been playing the game for almost 2,000 plus hours now, and I decided to make a tips video for you guys. And no matter if you're a new player or you have a ton of experience like me, this video should have some tips to help you out. And without further ado, let's get started. At where you'll start, and that should be in the green fields here. Everything's super far apart, so you have tons of space to build. There are beans and dozens of iron nodes to get you started in the early game. And once you have your hub down, you're going to be using the crafting bench a lot. It doesn't cost any power, and if you just tap spacebar, it holds down the craft button. So really, this is all you should be using for the entire first day of your playthrough. In fact, one of my best tips is to bring a container right next to you that's just being fed iron ore. So you can just continue to grab it, go back here, tap space, and you'll have ingots forever. And after you've crafted like, you know, 10,000 or so, you're probably able to start with the game and crafting items into more complicated parts. And then you do the same kind of process with copper ore this time, and then bring it close to your craft bench as well. After a little while, you should have a good amount of stuff and you'll be ready to start building machines. And the most important one, and the reason everything was handcrafted, was so we could make as many biomass burners as possible. These things are amazingly efficient, don't cost a lot of materials, and the entire planet is covered in fuel. So whenever you're expanding your factory, you'll keep getting more fuel, which will power your factory's expansion, and the process continues forever. But now with power expanded, it is time to get to factory expansion. Now the craft bench can make pretty much everything except for like space elevator parts and you need those to win the game. So you're kind of forced to automate like a factory. It kind of sucks because you have to use your resources, so handcraft as much as possible when you can. And when you're getting started in automation, you're going to need mergers and splitters. And ideally, you have all the resources you need going into one belt and then just splitting up through machines down a huge massive line. You really just need to spam up as many machines as you can. And don't worry about any of the production rates or the power stuff, because eventually it'll all just work out. Or you just build more biomass burners. And those are most of the early game tips I have for you. I guess the only other one is to avoid using coal power for as long as possible, and just keep building biomass burners. Oh, but wait! There is one thing you should automate as soon as possible. Screws. All the screws you can. Screws are one of the most important items in this entire game. So build a huge stockpile and keep building them forever. So switching gears out of the early game, let's talk about hard drives. Hard drives are these things that you can find in drop pods around the world, and they contain alternate recipes. There's a lot of them to find, and there are a lot of alternate recipes to choose from. And people ask me for a tier list of these every so often. And generally speaking, most of them are situational, but there are a few standout ones that you should definitely be considering. And most importantly, there is one that allows you to make screws out of iron ingots, which makes life a lot easier and saves a ton of power because you skip a production step with the iron rods. There's Caterium wire that allows you to use Caterium ingots to make a ton of wire, 120 a minute, and that will save you on copper and the copper you can actually turn into iron as well with this foundry recipe here, combining iron and copper ore to make iron ingots. Iron ingots make more screws. And even with that basic example, you can see how all these recipes work together. Though most of the alternates aren't super good, so maybe don't try to use them as often. I guess uh, another really good one is using steel beams to make screws. You can make 260 screws per minute, which is amazing and then the rest of these recipes aren't that important so i wouldn't really worry about them just try and get the critical ones that i mentioned and you'll be fine getting into the mid game things are pretty basic uh you get oil and oil is not a very important thing in this game and it's pretty much designed in a way to just make power for you so if you find oil just turn it into fuel as soon as possible and burn it all immediately. And then remember just to throw the polymer resin away. I think the developers just wanted to include this product just to get people to build the resource sinks. And that'll let you get a couple coupons. And once you have any amount of coupons, you wanna go to the awesome shop and buy yourself a boombox and get the goat music boombox tape. 
Because, oh my gosh, this game is amazing in a lot of ways, but the music, it doesn't really fit the factory theme, in my opinion. You can get the Goat Simulator soundtrack, and you can start blasting it instead. <laughs> But hey, people have different tastes in music, so if that's not your jam, you can check out some of the music I co-produced on Spotify. Link in the description. Back to the tips, though. Uh, once you get some fuel power going, you're pretty much done forever with power, and you're not going to have to worry about it. In fact, the rest of the game is just some basic automations. Also, with all that extra power while you're exploring, bring the power along with you, and whenever you find, like, useless nodes, like quartz nodes like these, just throw a miner on them at the very least, and then feed all the raw material into a resource sink, or awesome sink, whatever. This way at least you get more coupons and you're not just letting resources sit there, right? Because why not? It's just more coupons, baby. Get them burning. A few other things I really want to mention though, is sometimes you'll be inclined to use a vehicle to transport stuff. Maybe it's too far, you're too lazy to set up a belt, whatever. Uh, try not to use trucks or anything like that. Instead, use the factory cart. The factory cart is the best vehicle in the game. It requires no fuel at all, and you can still transport stuff by just throwing it into the back of the cart. And most people don't know this, but you can actually use the factory cart inside the truck stations. So you can just set up your own little factory cart loop path thingy, whatever. So you can transport stuff with the carts, then you don't have to use trucks, then you don't have to use coal, and you can use the coal to make more steel, and have more steel to make more screws. It's the perfect system. If for whatever reason though you do not believe in factory cart supremacy, and you're hell-bent on using a truck or something, I guess you can go for it, but I'd recommend setting up a nuclear plant first. Because the best fuel for a truck is actually a uranium fuel rod. These bad boys last forever in the trucks, and they don't use up a ton of coal. So you throw that bad boy in there, it's not super radioactive, and you are good to drive for hours? I actually don't know how long this lasts, but a long time, I can tell you that. And I guess you'll be able to transport even more screws than you would with the factory cart. So hey, the option's there if you want to go through the hassle. And if you go the nuclear fuel rod route, it gets a little complicated at times. You know, sometimes as a refresher, maybe just throw some Katerium into your system and see what happens. It'll show you where all your belts go and how everything works, and it's a really good maintenance exercise. Now for just some more general rapid fire tips here. Number one, you want to go to your options immediately after booting the game and turn off break notifications because you are working for a corporate overlord and breaks aren't allowed, obviously. Then with all the extra tickets that you end up getting, a easier way to go about the game is just by buying like extra parts. So say you need, I don't know, some batteries, just buy as many of those as you ever want. Oh yeah, and same thing with biomass. Say you can't find any because you're working in the desert, you can just buy up all the biomass you need as well. And if beans ever start messing with your factory or phasing through reality, a good way to keep beans away is by opening up your color gun pressing X and changing the fix-it factory swatch to something more blinding. And that should scare beans off. And you see that got them running. They're trying to escape into the cliff, horrified, right? Uh-oh, he's entered God mode. Uh, sometimes you're gonna have to use some uh, explosive encouragement. But sometimes beans just keep hanging around and eventually you'll get these larger billboards in the game. And these will help keep them out. Because you can just make one of them, set the settings to glossy and then emission strength three, get rid of like all the stuff that's on the billboard itself, like no text, no nothing like that. And then go to the colors and make it blinding white. And then the horrific light pollution will stop everything in its tracks. And unfortunately, because there's no other kind of base defense in the game, this is kind of like the best option to keep yourself safe. Or you could try a different approach and go with the best offense is the best defense. So get nukes as soon as you can. Start blast. What? You are formidable, Bean. 
But you are no god. In fact, that's a general theme that this game tries to get across, is that all life on this planet is evil. Like, even these little doggos here, they go into your factory, steal your stuff, and cause everything to break. Like, it's not because you did something wrong. It's because a doggo must have snuck in and has to be dealt with. Anyway, though, those are the worst tips I could think of for you, so hopefully it helps. And wait, did I mention that at the beginning of the video? Eh, future kids will add it in post, right? Probably. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.